John, tell us about your midlife crisis. <laughs> um, none, none to be had. None to be had. But why does your hair look like ramen noodles then? Um, I don't know. I like it. I'm just giving you a hard time. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Someone at my uh, at my work did this to his hair like a month or two ago and was braggadociously saying that no one else would do it. Like he wasn't even trying for reverse psychology. He was literally just trying to have the biggest dick in the room. And I figured that I was turning 30 soon and it'd be a very, very funny bit. And worst case scenario, my hair is always short. So it's not like it's going to look like fresh Bad forever. Yeah. For, yeah. My hair grows pretty fast. So it's what's, what's the worst that's going to fucking happen. I just take the Shane look for a, for a month <laughs> without the good beard. Starting to, starting to really wonder about your ability to stand up to peer pressure. <laughs> What's that? Dewan told me. To, Dewan told me to make a song, and he's like, "Fuck you, you won't." And I, I did it. <laughs> Somebody at the bar said, "You won't dye your hair this color." I did. Yeah, life's short, and so's your hair. <laughs> And that's, that's you nice. gotta put some fun colors in it before it grows out. No, fuck that. He doesn't go that far. I would do Come anything on. for love, but I won't do that. Uh, okay, fine. Teal. Is that what you want? Bet. Captain Peer Pressure? Bet. <laughs> oh, yeah, we just you have to won't. bet him, and then he'll do it. You will never do that. <laughs> never put teal in your hair. Fine. You would never. Yesterday. Here you go. <laughs> hey, anyone here into heroin? Bet, bet John won't do it. Bet John won't do it. <laughs> well, and that's how I got hooked on heroin. Hey, John, can you just dye the sides of your head, like, black, and so you look like a little skunk? I don't know. Can you dare me to do it? Dare you. <laughs> dare you, you right do now. it, bet. Done. <laughs> Fucking done. He's going to do it on air You think right anyone's going to, you think I'm going to let myself fail a bet? No way. Not today. Not in this economy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take every dollar I can get. In this work we do. <laughs> Gotta understand. Tony I can't Soprano. lose face around the guys. <laughs> well, Courtney, do you remember the Tony Soprano song you sent me? Oh, <laughs> the Tony one with the Soprano. cat. Yeah. <laughs> Life's got a ghoul. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. uh, so I, I saw on a post today something that is going to hearken to a glorious callback for us. Uh, does everybody know what your drag queen name is? <gasps> John Watkins. <laughs> no. Sprinkle, <laughs> Sprinkles McFinger Dick over here. Uh, no. So it's supposed to be uh, your, and it wasn't specific because I just did this with Melissa as well. It is either your grandmother's first name. And then the last candy that you consumed. Oh, I wish I had a Clark bar. Oh, that would have been great. I got to think about the candy because I don't remember the last time I ate candy. I don't believe in candy. Yeah, so uh, so my uh, my glorious name that I will be on using on stage uh, this coming Sunday is going to be Wanda Clusters. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's good I mean, for everybody. It's not candy. But I have to think back on the candy, but maybe uh, Miriam Barbecue Chip. <laughs> barbecue chip. Yeah, it's it specifically said sweets oh, that you um, had, and I think that's definitely. I mean, fuck, what was it? So my mine life has changed. So, so it's be... a, not Becky's pussy. <laughs> no, he said something sweet. Oh well. Yikes! Let's return to this comment. <laughs> yes, Courtney. Uh, mine would either be I could pick Marlene or Norma Jean, and then it would be Kit Kat. So Norma Jean Kit Kat. I I. I'd see it. <laughs> I honestly can't remember the last time I had. I love that Michael's just searching the heavens. Well, Michael and I, I think are I, the same boat. Like I don't remember the last candy that I ate because I don't really go in on. Okay, like, well, candy. what is what is the flavor of Lacroix you're drinking right now? Then okay, let's do that. Um, Wonder I'll bread be, looking motherfucker. I am Miriam Guava. <laughs> okay, Miriam Guava. I think uh, sounds perfect. like main stage down at the Tropicana. I'm ready uh -huh. for it. Shoot. Fucking what Michael's a, still searching a for a clue. Like a pastel moose or something like that. Pomple moose. Pomple moose. I don't remember it. I don't read it. I just snap it. How do you say grapefruit? I wish they say grapefruit. I really wish that the bit had worked and that anybody <laughs> cared how horribly Michael pronounces, uh, you know, nonsense because yeah, it's I a never-ending run of material just 
frothing out of this boy's mouth. I, I feel like the only people that think it's truly funny are the people that have to listen to him talk the most, which is us. Yep. <laughs> and that's what we learned. Because yep. yeah, Courtney and I actually, you know, we, we sat down with that uh, that video for what it took us, like, a, a decent amount of time to kind of, like, conceptualize it. Yeah. Sorry that the, the kids weren't ready for it yet. I'm not but, you know, taste is subjective, so. Yeah. Hence, we have a popular podcast. Exactly. Allegedly. So then my name would be Marianne Grapefruit, I guess. <laughs> Checks out. Yeah. Well, as per usual, thank you for killing the bit, Michael. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I thought you and wanted consistency. Welcome, yeah, yeah, if I wanted consistency. Um on the wrong goddamn show. And speaking of which, <laughs> welcome to the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. Allegedly. Whew. And I want to start off the show uh -oh. by saying big shout out to now super fan Michael for having made my life far more interesting this week and proving me wrong that there is somebody other than my mother listening to this show. And that makes me very happy. So thank you, Michael. Much yes. appreciated. Michael. Yay, Michael. It's a great name. First time yeah, I've you ever did said not that, sound yeah. enthused. Is it because your name is Michael, so you can't sound enthused when you say your own name? No, no. That's you sounded actually... very. That sounded very like, "Yay, Michael." I feel like he <laughs> says I'm that sorry. in the uh, in the toilet every evening, as he's you know, trying to crest <laughs> himself Yay, over the Michael. lip. <laughs> Yay, Michael. A little positive Yay, positive affirmation Michael. is important. Yeah, but Shane, you are you are right. It is nice to know that sometimes the abyss will talk back. Indeed. You know? So. As I've been screaming for years, and uh, he actually even had decent things to say about you, which proves he hasn't listened to many episodes. Oh, <laughs> so I see that he also doesn't have culture. <laughs> no, uh, he actually uh, had had a, just a steady stream of praise for everybody here, except for his namesake, and uh, so uh, that's that's par for the course. Correct. So that's fair. <laughs> there can be only one, I think, and he's uh, he's angling to edge you out, Michael. He it's gonna be job. a a great Michael War. Watch out! Oh, jeez, it's almost like uh, what was it the was the Nathan War or something? I can't like that remember the like name this year. Yeah, uh -huh. I can't either. <laughs> well, regardless, I feel like it's it's the tagline for AVP is uh, whoever wins, we lose. <laughs> <laughs> So in any event, what we typically do on this godforsaken show is that we will delve into a random esoteric topic, and in the course of explaining it to one another, we will lie about it, and it is incumbent upon the other co-hosts to ferret the facts from the fiction and, uh, you know, try to win some non-existent points to prove that we have some semblance of worth in this reality, and I'm not entirely certain that's true. Mm, validation. Validation? Validation. Validatorian. Like, Valid nation. <laughs> like I got my I got my parking ticket. I'd like it validated, please. In the Thunder Rose. Uh quick aside. Phoebe Bridgers covered Metallica's Nothing Else Matters, and it's amazing. I don't know why you saying the Thunder Rolls reminded me of that because it's not the same band, but I just needed to get that out of my system. Okay, I'm done. That you was a very quick aside. I'm I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, vocal golf clap. Well, you just have to talk faster than everybody else to get your lines out, John. I do. Uh, if I if I want them to get in front of uh, the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie Taco. Yeah. <laughs> Still don't get it. Nor do I want to. I think you should leave. <laughs> Whew, I'm well, that uh, in that case, then. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking to me. Wrong oh, kid oh, died. Well. <laughs> Michael's been uh, cut in half pretty bad. Every time I was told that, uh, <laughs> your tuition to be paid. <laughs> oh, I could buy out my college if you'd stop creeping around the morgue down there at the school, and I imagine folks wouldn't have to say it to you perpetually. <sighs> I mean, it's it's my favorite haunt. I love going there. <laughs> Trying to get live fish or dead girls, apparently. <laughs> that was Just almost a good transition but that's that's next week um so we're actually doing yes i'm just gonna leave you hanging like that we'll tease it for next week maybe if probably. you think i'm letting you pull another week of this shit out of your ass you're mistaken my <laughs> Ooh, friend this is gonna this be better awkward. be the best episode of your life um i like to think so but make michael do all the everything. intros oh God, no 
hard hard pivot so we're gonna talk about uh something different this week so the bristol stool scale <laughs> i am still interested to hear about that so but before i don't our... need your pity it is not pity is genuine fascination it's just i love just random units of measurement for just, just like stop and bullshit. go fine whatever <laughs> there are five lies today Yes, and um, as a request from John, I'm going to give just a very, very light uh, TLDR from last week. Oh, Christ. What? <laughs> Did he, like, you know, have a bout of insomnia through the last episode, or what? No, he said he, he had quite a week. I just didn't really retain anything. That's, I mean, that's oh, how I, most of my episodes go, so that's What fair. else is different? Yeah. In the last episode, we met... Oh, Christ. Chuck Dederich. I will Still not Diedrich. Say don't care. But <laughs> join <laughs> the club, motherfucker. Charles Juk Dederich, a recently sober AA junkie. Uh, since AA, that is Alcoholics Anonymous, only did Alcoholics, uh, Chuck, Chuck thought he'd do something similar. Uh, but with all types of addicts, not just alcoholics. He first called it tender loving care uh, before incorporating it as synonym. His techniques centered around quitting drugs cold turkey and the game, uh, where participants hurl insults and scream at each other as a means of releasing pent-up energy. Otherwise um, known as a podcast in the modern parlance. <laughs> mm -hmm. After gaining sympathy through getting arrested over zoning violations, his program exploded with popularity. Uh, he opened uh jazz parties and the game sessions to squares or non-addicts and hollywood ate it up so much so that synanon was made into a movie in 1965 we ended last week's episode with chuck's declaration that the program was not a success and ended the concept of graduation because once an addict always an addict since thinking got an addict on drugs in the first place chuck oh, uh chuck reasoned Maybe Synanon should do the thinking. Okay. Now, I will, let me start by diving a little bit further into Chuck's rationalization uh, to his followers as to why he ended graduation. Without continued uh, peer pressure, most ex-addicts relapse around 90 days after leaving, at least from what he said. Uh, because full recovery, and because full recovery was not happening in Chuck's eyes, he thought it would be a better idea if these ex-addicts would remain with Synanon forever. With Chuck's help, these ex-addicts could be used to form a utopian society, designed by Chuck, of course. Chuck was familiar with Walden's Pond, if you guys are familiar with that, by uh, not... Ralph Waldo Emerson. He was a... Uh, he was a... Uh, what? What, Shane? Are you going to correct me on, on my pronunciation of his name as no, well? No, the fucking book is entitled On Walden Pond, you simple fuck. That's what the fucking source said. It said, well, your Walden's fucking pond. source is wrong, you simple sack of shit. So if you want to start spewing this nonsense for another hour and a half, at least try to peddle it to the fucking passersby, because I'm not buying it anymore. Chuck was familiar with the <laughs> Jesus works Christ of Ralph Waldo Emerson and B.F. Skinner, uh, just in case you don't know who that is. He was an American psychologist who developed behavioral analysis and design operant conditioning. Essentially, uh, there's a thing out there in the psychology world kind of called a Skinner box. And it's a way of, it's almost like uh, the ring the bell, get the slobber. Um, Skinner, with hardly know her. Skinner damn near killed her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Essentially, a oh, lot of sounds his... of the lamb sharp twist. <laughs> Skinner is all about behaviors and how to change behaviors in people and animals um he also uh designed a human utopia in his 1948 novel walden 2 which came from the same source so it could be written completely different it sounds like a made up different. a made up thing is walden 2 made up no that was true i don't know why he decided to call it walden 2 is it like not... two like t-o-o -O, or like two no, like... <laughs> like the number two <laughs> that would have been better than walden 2 like walden walden as well two. yeah <laughs> yeah so essentially chuck has been reading up on some utopian ideas uh in 1967 the same year he ended graduation Synanon expanded into the beautiful club 
Casa del Mar, a massive beachside hotel in Santa Monica. It quickly became a center and dormitory for drug treatment and business operations. Once purchased, uh, Sinanon pressured old club members because it was an old, it was a club like a hotel of sorts to leave since they still owned property in the hotel, um, which they did not take kindly to and issued a lot of complaints to the city about it. Um, complaints to the city led to the city making a grave mistake, one that it had already made several years prior. Santa Monica thought it sufficient evidence this time to, instead of taking them to court and storming the beachfront with bulldozers and police, like I mentioned last week, uh, they just did it without the court case. They just charged the, the beach and destroyed courts and cabanas with bulldozers and police. A second time. <laughs> and it went about as well as the first. The city of Santa Monica claimed that it owned part of the property right on the beach, and wrecked the joint, as they did prior. Old Chuck appeared on a, uh, at a press conference and declared the city had fallen into the hands of mad dogs and Sinanon would sue them all, which he did. Santa Monica surrendered the case, and as a result, Sinanon became untouchable. They no longer had to obey zoning laws, and sympathetic donations came back with a vengeance. Sinanon used, used this flood of cash to buy up property everywhere quickly becoming Santa Monica's largest land owner. Is that bullshit? No, that was actually a really fascinating piece of uh, information. Um, Chuck and Sinanon also started getting more into real estate as a means of raising money. Uh, they had also, when they were originally registered as a drug rehabilitation program, they registered as uh, tax exempt, uh, as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, so it was interesting that uh, Chuck was also making money through other way uh, through other things. Um, and I'll also cover a little bit later on because I mentioned um, business operations. He does get into different types of businesses and real estate was one of them. Well, before we digress too, uh, too much farther, I realize I got so angry. D did you actually say Emerson previously? I probably did. Just assume that I said it wrong. It's easier that way. No, no, no. Who who did you say wrote Walden? Ralph Waldo Emerson. Okay, that's bullshit. Is it not? I no. thought that. Then I can't it's, trust it's that Henry, source. It's Henry Six David lies. Thoreau. Oh my God. Okay, I'm not trusting that source. Okay. All right, that's cool. And and I was so I was so canceled. mad that <laughs> it, it, it just like. Blew past me and was like, "That's either a really great lie because you knew I'd get pissed, or you don't know what the hell you're talking about." We are called the Disinformed Podcast. We for are a different reason this week. Indeed. Well, all right. Because so now Michael there's uh, five plus one. We are not educators. Today. I am. I am not by any stretch of the imagination. For Except well, the other when you thing, get paid to do it. <laughs> the reason why I'm also hot is because I'm sitting here going like, if I'd let that go on for another five minutes, all of my bona fides would be removed if I had let that shit slip past me. So God, I'm going to have to double check that after this episode and like just purge everything from that from the record for future references. Okay. <laughs> Well, I you, apologize you know, for that. No, you're fine. It just I realized I went I went real hard because I got upset and then it, for good reason because apparently none of that was credible. So you can remove me screaming at you if you want, and we'll just do revisionist history and no, uh, we'll play no, it another I'll keep way. It. Okay, and, and all right. People people apparently enjoy uh, me being screamed at. So well, why would I deny the people what they want? You got the syllables right though. Oh, good. Written, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau. <laughs> Yeah, a tomato potato. Yeah, you know. Um, where was I? Oh, okay. So, uh, I mentioned that they bought property in Santa Monica. They also started acquiring property elsewhere, including a large res uh, sorry, a large industrial building in Oakland, California, uh, turning that too into a residential facility. Uh, he also bought um open land in Tamales Bay, Marin County, and in Badger, Tulane, or I'm sorry, Tulare County, both in California. They mention the counties a lot in a lot of the different sources instead of the actual towns, I guess. So I had to include them as well just to be completionist. It's a California okay. thing. Uh, that's fair. I'm just shocked <laughs> there's a place called Tamales. Either that or I'm butchering it. Who knows? Either is possible. Yes. 
Um, with graduation gone, uh, Chuck thought up another way to entice more people, though not necessarily addicts, into the fold. In 1968, he established a new type of Synanon membership, the Lifestyler. You know, for all the hip and trendy people that want to join. Members of this group were allowed to have jobs outside of Synanon, and they could even live outside of the Synanon community. Pretty good idea, right? You still live the life you want, you know, have your own, um, do whatever you want, but you're living the Synanon lifestyle. So it's a church. That comes later. So are you um, just accosting <laughs> random passersby on the street and yelling at them in order to, to play the game, or? Well, <laughs> kind of, um, but first you had to sign up for it, and you had to pay for the membership. Okay, um, so they just trap people on the street and then leave them with a tape recorder? Yeah. Exactly. Strap him to a chair with some duct tape, and all of a sudden, would you like to play a game? <laughs> I mean, have you not then, seen the homeless people in like L.A.? Like that's what they do normally. Yeah, fucking a. And Oof. set up tents for blocks and blocks, you know, cordon off street corners. So the price, which is why they couldn't just accost homeless people, um, the price was pretty much you had to give up most, if not all, of your income to Synanon. So you were pretty much signing all of your money away. Hmm. But you know. It's worth it for the lifestyle, I guess, if you really want. This new influx of cash was far more stable than donations, which would ebb and flow depending on if something else, you know, happened, like he got arrested again, you know, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and it helped replace the government grants that Synanon was weaning itself off of. And why was he, why was old Chuck declining these grants? Uh, it was because they came with a catch. The catch was that there has to be some kind of independent examination and verification of success rates. So, hold on, is Chuck, that bullshit? No, not uh, not for the grants that they were originally applying for. Okay, they needed to be because they were the grants were for drug rehabilitation. They had to have some sort of independent verification that they were actually useful, right? Yeah, the government just... is kind of big on having some sort of accreditation eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually is a key word. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I was going to say, but, based on people that I know and their experiences, they did not have those things in place, but were able to get grants. So <laughs> that's why I was like, maybe not. Uh, I mean, it is a different time. The 60s were a lot more uh, different, I guess, for lack of a better term, because I can't think of another word. More to different it. is a better term. Yeah. More different. More yes. different. The golden ages, as some people are like to say. Um, fucking hippies. <laughs> considering that Chuck had said that the success rates of his program, even though if he called it a failure, was between 80 and 100%, um, it should be very easy to independently verify that, right? Um, but no, they, they just kept cutting those grants, especially because they were getting easier money from other people, like the Lifestylers. So remember when I mentioned business operations? I'm going to go a little bit into that. Uh, so they ran a business selling promotional items like Get Well Soon balloons and event cards, kind of like Hallmark. Um, even though they didn't, uh, they didn't, they sold a lot of them, but some of them were kind of like based off of addiction or recovering from addiction. Um, they, those didn't sell much. Shane, give us ones, like, like three well card soon. headlines right now for addiction. Uh, happy recovering from your addiction card. Happy. You stop drinking yourself into a coma, uh, card. Um, I can't, I can't. Heard you're still one. shitting yourself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Best wishes. <laughs> In addition to these promotional items, uh, Synanon Enterprises also ran gas stations and, uh, did a lot of real estate or landlords like apartment buildings. Um, they also made pottery, which I thought was very odd. It wasn't a lie. That was just, they sold promotional items. Real estate, gas stations, and they made pottery. I mean, you could put the two in sort of like a, a formulated pincer and that you could sell a card saying like pots, the anti-pot. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I would buy that. Be a pot um, head of a different feather. <laughs> here's a planter, you fucking junkie. <laughs> <laughs> At its height, Synanon was generating some $10 million per year in revenue from these ventures. Bullshit. Not 10 mil. It was 10 mil. At, at, at is, the that 10 mil is that 10 mil in the 60s or is that 10 mil now? 
it didn't specify, but because those were entirely different fucking things. Yeah, I would I would say based off of what they were doing and how much they were how much stuff that they owned, I would say it was probably like 1960s money. Yeah, from property that would probably uh, particularly California property. Yeah, you could manage that pretty easily. And uh, considering Santa Monica is really close to Hollywood, and we already mentioned that it was fairly affluent. Yeah, and they owned a lot of property in there. So I can I can see it being 1960s money. So that's a lot of fuck you money. Gold star, Michael, for affluent, by the way. I If I, I can harangue you for the other things, <laughs> I will attempt to edify and, and deify to a certain extent. See, now I'm just going to let that get to my head, though. So Well, you should. Uh, Eventually, you might get some confidence when I'm through screaming at you. Huh? Confidence? I, I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, Chuck never got over how he felt when he experimented with LSD in the 50s. Uh, <laughs> Obviously. Felt, it really changed his life. There was actually uh, another source that I have that's in the show notes mentioned kind of like uh, researchers that took part in the LSD experimentation that said that he reacted far differently than a lot of other people in the experiments. Uh, instead of getting the hallucinations and those sort of things that you usually associate with LSD, he mainly just got really good um, vibes of sorts. It, it was like it helped calm him down in a way that he was able to see things, but he wasn't hallucinating. What is he, it Brian the, Wilson now? Or uh, Apparently so. It was it was something that I thought was odd that they said, well, he actually reacted far differently than anyone else did. And instead of hallucinating, he just suddenly had a realization that he should open a drug rehab uh place so um he felt that if other people experienced the journey he went on that more people would understand and fully support his efforts uh since lsd was extremely extremely illegal and encouraging mass lsd use throughout his company might be a little too much for a drug rehabilitation program to endorse uh chuck chalk chuck (laughs) chalk his name is chalk now chalk chalk smash Uh, (laughs) Chuck sought other more legal avenues to recreate that euphoria. Air quotes on the legal. This seems really bizarre to me that you say, I took LSD and it made me want to stop doing drugs. It's well, like yeah, saying he opened f- up a door in his mind and it's he like, went into his mind and he found out that he didn't need the LSD, but he needed to take the LSD to open the door to know that he didn't need the LSD. True. It's like saying the first time I got laid made me want to be a monk. <laughs> Well, I mean, we've all had hookups before. Yeah. Where you're like, "This is it. I don't. I'm done. I don't." I'm swearing off. Again. I'm swearing off the game. And it, let alone, I'm also going to encourage other people to join the monastic lifestyle in my fashion. <laughs> yeah, don't don't go down that road. A lot of Have you ever heard about uh, abstaining from sex? It's it's pretty cool. All That's the cool, all the cool people don't fuck. Is that called an Epstein bar? Or? That actually is. I mean, that is the the incel movement, is it not? Like the involuntarily celibate. I thought it was. Just or, being I a guess piece it's of voluntarily. Yeah, I was gonna say it also. <laughs> no, like it's it, slightly different. You can't become incel after you've had sex. <laughs> I I guess that's true. It's. One I of mean, those, you can you know, technically. But I was gonna say, look at Ben Shapiro. He's at least had sex once. <laughs> yeah, gunpoint. <laughs> I saw okay, so another we're man. Have sex his, so this, this, his, is gun, right? this is a loaded gun. This is a loaded gun. No, and we're gonna have sex against his will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. His wife and was like, "You're gonna Frenchy go, Piro, You gonna lay down <laughs> right now?" There's Listen, a. Can we and... talk about this for just a second because I'm kind of opposed to this sort of thing. Like, no. <laughs> okay. Now put this ring on your finger. Okay, we're married now. <laughs> How You're dry do go you down want? to the desert? To God damn it. There was like anyway. 17, 17 branches of that Ben Shapiro joke. <laughs> it's, it's just spread like roots. Choose which one you like most. <laughs> Go and there. let us know in the comments. You or will. leave you a review are, saying you, it. You're one of the balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> we're going to check the Bet. YouTube video and it's just going to be John just like 10 comments, 10 reviews. Yeah. He's just going to hear it like, you know what? You're right. Fuck, they can't tell me what to do. Fuck, I'm going to say it right now. Oh, I'll leave a comment if you dare me to. <laughs> You won't, no balls. You won't leave a comment on every single YouTube video that we made. <laughs> You're right, I actually won't. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Ben Shapiro, you dummy thick. Now dummy up and let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd read that fan fiction. Ew. <laughs> you would read any fan fiction. Don't act like there's like some miraculous thing that needs to be ticked off for you to read uh-huh. it. Yeah, You've read the dumbest fair. shit on like on the planet just for the love of the game. You didn't even know we'd do anything for it. You just had it on file. 
That well, is true. <laughs> coming soon to uh, to disinformed fan friction, but Shapiro. <laughs> There's the all-anal the, final chapter. There's Indeed. a TikTok going around right now of a, a girl who's trying to steal Ben Shapiro's wife. Her whole thing is she thinks she can seduce Ben Shapiro's wife away from him, and it's the best thing I've ever seen. I love that. The payoff uh, is yeah. going to be big. Right. Ooh. Can I change the title and call it Holy Roller? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. you may. Done. Holy Diver. Um, so I mentioned, oh, yes, seeking legal avenues to create, recreate that euphoria. Uh, thus was born the trip because Chuck has no creativity at all with names. A combination of group psychotherapy, coercive persuasion, mysticism, and old-fashioned spiritual revival, the trip took place over a weekend and was first offered to a select honored few before later being an option for the whole uh, population of Synanon. Chuck called it an insight producing experience, saying, At the end of this rainbow, there will be a pot of gold. Through dissipation or long hours of activity without very much sleep, we hope to bring about in you a conscious state of inebriation. We want to get you loaded without acid. This is all bullshit. So they took. No, that's all true. State of yeah, this <laughs> inebriation. It sounds like the Willy Wonka. If you're song. sleep, if oh. you're sleep deprived, basically that you're going to oh, start yeah, yeah. reaching a state where you are sort of like incoherent. Mm -hmm. So, as Michael's proven, yeah, uh, as most times uh, I'm recording, uh, he continues. You'll learn more about yourself, your fellow man, the world, the nature of reality in one weekend than you would in four years. Let your ego go. Let things happen to you. It's a feeling of closeness to each other we are after. The death of the ego. A reference point for the rest of your life. Ego a go go. <laughs> Egos gotta go go. And we you may egos a go go. <laughs> you may change your value system, notions about life and viewpoints about people. It will produce a new breed of human beings with greatly expanded potentials. If you do your best, you can't fail. To grossly oversimplify, what the trip entailed, it involved sleep-deprived versions of the game catered to the participants. That is, guides who oversaw the trip did homework, did their homework on each tripper, as they were called, and came up with past traumas from each person to bring up in the game. During these hours-long sessions, uh, leadership participating in the game would explain to the tripper that they were not really chosen as an honor, but they were chosen because they were resistors, part of the, quote, dummies that hold Synanon back. Uh, Chuck would also say during these sessions, during the, the trip, maybe one day we will just put dingbats like you against the wall and wash them off and bring them back into the human race. What? What? <laughs> yeah. He, no. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. So is he going to, like, miscarate <laughs> upon them and... <laughs> Pretty much, you can you can tell anyone anything when they're seventy two hours of no sleep, just getting constantly screamed at. I see the uh, people's temple kind of parallels here yeah. that you were referring to. Yeah, mm -hmm. couldn't they just done ayahuasca and then like moved on? Like, wouldn't that have been easier? <laughs> you would think. <laughs> Better yet, just spit in each other's mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Go on a vision quest. Um, at the end of the trip, the trippers would be led into a great ballroom when they were greeted by other Synanon members who would congratulate the trippers for a job well done, and everyone would participate in group hugs. There was a lot of celebrations going on. Ah, so they were chipper trippers. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You would take them down to their lowest low and then bring them back up to just immediately, like, to do anything to change their behavior to become more dependent on them. Uh, sometimes, though, these uh, congratulations would get a little too excited, and there were multiple cases uh, where hallucinating trippers would uh, engage in an orgy that would have to be quickly broken up. <laughs> I mean, that was the first thing I thought immediately once I went through. Is like, yeah, some folks can get a little stimulated here. Yeah, you get a little, you get, you know, you get ce celebrated like, hey, you made it, you survived, and then you get a little touchy feely, and then you get a lot of touchy feely. Which because Whose I thought it, it to break that up. <laughs> um, the the people that would be congratulating the trippers, so not the trippers themselves, but the people that are like, "Hey, you did a good job," you know, like the people that Just would be clapping and drop you walk to your knees and like, "Let me thank you back." <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, can I call bullshit on the orgy thing then? Because that's almost too close to trying to stimulate Shane. I feel like if if that's my impulse, <laughs> you had to do it for me. Yeah, that that was bullshit. There was elephants uh, on acid all over again. As far as I know, the orgies never happened. All um, right, but I'd assume and that's when the orgies started. Yeah, <laughs> that's where they were ended. Uh, was I assume. <laughs> I. For in my in my opinion, I would assume that these uh, trippers would be so just mentally and physically exhausted that even the idea of just going down on someone right then and there would be a little too much, and they would probably rather go sleep. Now, if someone but, wanted to have sex with them, yeah, they had a shotgun <laughs> blast for the the week. Is this before or after their their only one shotgun blast of cum? What? No, you're not allowed to masturbate during the the the, the game. Thought rules were made to be broken. Well, I guess that's fair. Um, <laughs> I actually, actually, now I think about it, I don't know because it's not physical. It's not physical harm or anything like that. So I don't. I, I think if they did do trying that. to ejaculate towards someone would, in fact, <laughs> violate. <laughs> that's that's fair. So I feel as long like that would not have the face, neck, or chest. Then no, I feel like it would have an even more dramatic impact if you're sitting there just belittling someone while hard stroking. <laughs> oh, God. No, oh, that's... you're a miserable fuck. <laughs> Who's a dirty boy? No, oh, that's just John's search bitch. history. That's not this. <laughs> that's fair. It's <laughs> actually how he and I met. <laughs> Christian Christian Mingle was a very different place back then. <laughs> we met on Only Farmers, don't lie. I asked if they I were... could plow your back 40. <laughs> I said, I've been waiting for you my entire life. Indeed. <laughs> Come to me. Come on me. That's what I was saying. True. So, everyone... <laughs> Bye, Courtney. <laughs> and uh, she has left the building. Is it because your camera was frozen? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All thought the experience was beautiful. <laughs> and the trip was so <laughs> successful, air quotes, <laughs> that in its second year, the trip brought in $500,000 by itself. Ooh. We're starting yeah. to call you it, guys. Me, you make me think of the fly in Bug's Life that's floating <laughs> towards the zapper. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> So around this time, Chuck and others, the leadership specifically, began to call Synanon an alternative society, a utopia, if you will. And to perpetuate this society and its ideas, one must make sure to teach those of the newer generation. Now, Chuck could not bond with children uh, ever since his... (laughs) Good. Good. Not in that way. <laughs> Ever since God I got incarcerated damn. that one time for treating uh, people without a license, I can't go within 500 yards of a beautiful boy. I meant he could never interact with children. He, he oh, it's, couldn't it's get one it of those up. Because he was registered? Oh Sorry, what, no. Michael's, what Michael's trying to say is that try as he might, he just never could fall in love with the right one. Oh you know, he, he was God. looking for little Mr. Right, and he never found him. So he just kept playing the field. <laughs> I want little Mr. Right, and I keep getting little Mr. Dong. Oh my God! <laughs> so exactly. ever since, ever since his younger, <sighs> ever since his younger brother died from influenza while Chuck was twelve, <laughs> he blamed himself for that for his younger brother's death. And Wrong from that died. time, from that time onwards, he could never interact with children, including his own children, which he did so have at this point in time. he's haunted by the face of his influenza-ridden uh, sibling? Yeah, and so he just, he didn't know how to deal with children at all. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah. that's probably a good thing. But <laughs> Michael, what's so, your reason? I, I can't interact hey. with anyone. I'm just <laughs> that socially awkward. So Michael's like, like, guys, to be honest with you, they just scare the fuck <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> You're not alone. I mean, it only takes it only takes one act for, or one time when a kid's just staring at a at a at the ceiling and it's like seeing like things move and stuff like that. That apparently happened like a Do couple you... weeks ago at, at my at my girl at Destiny's sister's house with one of the cousins. So like with like so. the inquisitive minds of like young kids, does that bother you when you get simple questions? Do you answer them in a fun way or do you try and beat them to death with science? It depends. If they're genuinely curious about the answer. Like, Michael, why is the sky blue? And you're like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> if they're <laughs> 
I almost said if they're being a little shit about it, no, I <laughs> that already prefaces everything. Um, if they sound genuinely curious, then I will answer it with, you know, I wouldn't say, well, it's because light refracts off the uh, particles. That I would Liar, say, you that's know, exactly what you would say. Exactly I wouldn't use say. big words. I would say light from the sun makes it that color. Well, you see, because Superman, when he's flying in the sky, his cape... <laughs> <laughs> no, go like, on. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear this. <laughs> uh, much like Shane, I don't have an end to that. Thing. Ah, I see. Oh, okay. You know what the actual answer is that Michael would give? What? The sky's blue because I decided to let you out of your box today, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now you shut your fucking mouth before I put you back inside. Being outside of your box is a privilege. Indeed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go back in your box again, do you? <laughs> You don't want the viscous rain to fall down through the holes into your mouth again, do you? <laughs> oh, God. So also considering how Terrible. little Chuck respected dope fiends and how little any sort of like, he, I mean, we've already heard quotes where he pretty much treats them like shit. Um, he wouldn't trust them to raise their own kids. So he decided in 1966 that any and all children in the community should be raised communally oh fun <laughs> as it wasn't this wasn't uh, oh sorry oh as a former child myself i don't believe anybody should raise children i'm inclined yeah. to agree yeah. <laughs> i just wonder if chuck wrote a little song about this hello crackhead my old friend i'm here to take your kids again <laughs> <laughs> still a better version than disturbed indeed Oof. and i'm still disturbed for thinking it yes. this wasn't completely out of the blue for utopian <laughs> societies as communally raised children was a common practice by these communities of the 19th so oh. the century beforehand and the 20th century uh including which i thought was interesting uh upton sinclair's uh failed helicon home colony i didn't read too much into that but that was a little side note that they included that apparently upton 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 upton, mm -hmm. upton sinclair uh started uh tried his hand at Making utopian, uh, you know, community. Wasn't he just trying to make sausages out of children? I mean, you could do both. That wasn't. It's a sustainable protein source. The... Oh yeah, yeah. It's got everything yeah. plants crave. <laughs> so green is people. However, Synanon took it a step farther. Uh, Chuck actually coined the phrase "It takes a village to raise a child." Bullshit. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> who actually? Bullshit. Who actually coined that? Um, while there is some debate on the origin of the wording itself, the context behind the proverb is strictly African. And I say African because it comes from a lot of different cultures in Africa. Okay. Um, there's actually, I almost started getting into a, a really deep rabbit hole about that myself because I was curious, like who, who coined that term? Yeah. But I, I, I was already like 20, 30 minutes down into it. And I'm like, unless I'm doing an episode on its own, right about the the meaning behind this i'm Which not please going don't it. No. it doesn't need to be an episode it doesn't it definitely doesn't if the phrase was it takes the village people to raise a child then i'm, then I'm in that's an episode superior that that's would an be episode. an interesting case like if the village people started their own like utopian society in the navy like that yeah <laughs> oh, even better. when the child you know when a baby reached six to nine months the child was turned over to the hatchery as it was called <laughs> Because, again, no. Chuck was not creative at all. Uh, visitation was highly restricted. Uh, I couldn't find specifics on what was taught in the hatchery. Probably for good probably reason. Quackery, probably quackery, actually. Teach, most likely. <laughs> <Quack away. laughs> um, but what I, uh, found, what I could find uh, stated that initially things were actually fairly good. Uh, with skilled teachers joining uh, Synanon to instruct kids as, you know, squares and not addicts, uh, these children spent uh, time with people from all walks of life. Especially because, like I mentioned last week, there was no discrimination at all and everyone was able to join. Um, especially after 1972 when Chuck moved the hatchery to Synanon's property on Tamales, Tamales? I don't know, on that bay. You're doing um, great. Yes, thank you. Uh, it was a farm-like estate where uh, children had horses, tennis courts, dirt bikes, sports, and a giant open area with which to roam. You don't put a hatchery in the farm, my friend. 
Yeah, because then, you know, it, it's it's a little bit harder because you have to deal with other sort of animals, farm animals, and you don't want them to overlap because then they can get stressed. Yeah. Some animals are more equal than others. You said Very that last true. week, too, I believe, right? I probably. I mean, I've said last it a week, lot. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, children did have to write essays on Chuck and why he was great, but that was the only thing that I found uh, was massively like different than normal, I guess, school. Or and that was the only interesting thing that I found that was like strictly mind control, brainwashy esque. Well, in most schools, they also write essays about white men in power, so I really don't see how it's different. That's fair. Um, yeah, no, I can't actually <laughs> think of a. I can't think of a way to expand that any further other than. Yeah, no, you're right. Why um, I would fuck Chuck <laughs> by Billy Batsbull. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> Firstly, Chuck seems very virile for a man of his age. Secondly, his wife is a sex worker. And X. I think he knows how to do it. Ex sex worker, thank you. Ex sex um, worker. Dun, 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 dun. The theme songs just got so many possibilities. That is true. Uh, let's see. One source I found liking these children's experiences uh, as being comparable to being raised as a rich kid uh, on a you know giant property. Um, but also that source uh, was an ex Synanon member uh, after she had fled Synanon and was writing a paper to get a degree on Synanon practices. So that source is a little bit debatable. Um, just yeah. Gotcha. Negative reinforcement was never used at the beginning stages, uh, especially physical abuse, uh, since Synanon at the time was strictly nonviolent. <sighs> However, like all good things do, someone's got to come ruin it. Usually it's me, but in this case, <laughs> that person was none other than Chuck. Oh, Chuck. Over. Depending it's... on the emphasis of that phrase, somebody's got to come ruin it. Is uh, something that I think that I've also heard John usually say more is than me. Twice. <laughs> Over the course of the several of the first years of the hatchery, Chuck's policies in restricting parents and how often they can visit with the kids, uh, that kept getting more uh, strict. Uh, eventually, getting to the point where children could only see their children about once a week. Children could only see <laughs> children. Yeah. Sorry, parents. Wow, could only so they see fucking their too? Babies raising babies. Uh, yeah, uh, the um, the everybody communal, be fucking. Yeah, the what was it? Conjugal visits that they do in prison. <laughs> Babies raising um, scabies. Oh, uh, so parents were only able just to just don't see... understand. God damn it! <laughs> parents were only able to see their children once a week, if that. Uh, and if they tried to see their children more often, um, they would actually be given titles uh, like mothers were called head suckers. <laughs> If they visited their children too much, no. that, that can't be real. Head it suckers? was. It is. It is real. Remember the trip. I think Chuck's wife has also had a very <laughs> profound impact on his mental state. <laughs> well, when she became a mother, Shut that's off. you know. Mm, mama. <laughs> Ooh, mommy. Oh, mommy. <laughs> the children's curriculum was soon updated to include aspects from Synanon itself, specifically. The game. So children did have to partake in the game. This also coincided... Coincided. God, fuck. I say that word wrong every time. It's okay, little buddy. At the same time, Synanon uh, started to take in juvenile delinquents uh, who were sent there either by court order or by juvenile agencies. Uh, since Synanon was originally a drug rehab facility, uh, kids caught with drugs... Uh, including We're given needle. more <laughs> and a puppy <laughs> yes and then sent on their way also i i know that you're you're the middle of the thing but you talking about like they accept juvenile delinquents like part of me thinks that like at least some of them have to be like those stereotypical kids just like walking down the street with their rucksack you know like with the the, the stick they got know, a the bindle bag. <laughs> yeah a little bit of, like, i don't like my parents see so a newbie from the <laughs> like, 1930s is just trundling along in like, santa monica in short pants what, what the fuck are you doing here like i just hate my parents <laughs> i'm here for the cool lifestyle of synanon i'm the cultural anachronism in this story see <laughs> see sir this is a wendy's uh, yeah. <laughs> so 
kids caught with drugs were specifically sent to Synodon. They didn't necessarily have to be addicts if they were just caught smoking a doobie because, again, this was the early or late 60s. Late, late 60s, <laughs> early 70s. What the fuck? Since it was around that time, yeah, everyone partook in weed. If you were caught oh, with it as a minor, phew, straight to Synodon. Uh, judges were actually like kind of given kickbacks as well if they were sending these kids synonyms way um these kids did not want to be there obviously especially if it was like oh yeah i'll take this doobie once for the first time in my life oh got caught um well unless you're talking about rucksack randall he chose to be there (laughs) well of course he was the one the one exception (laughs) because it, it beat working in the newspapers uh you know for Two cents a two cents a week to help feed his thirteen other children uh, through the Great Depression. Now, admittedly, yep. Bindle Brad was also particularly <laughs> fond of enjoying his time in the hatchery as well. This is a call but for Bindle a new Brad animated and series. Rucks- <laughs> yeah, Bindle Brad and Rucksack Randy though they don't get along. No, no they're from no. two different sides of the they're farm. They're pretty salty, so they get pugilistic with one another from time to time. And the terrible part is they're roommates. Oh, I'm so gonna smash they live you with each other? right in the And mush. even worse, they're blind. Wait, no, they're they're blind. No, they both they both have rucksacks and bindles, so they're basically playing human pinata with everybody around them, just whacking everything. Where's the candy? Wouldn't you like to see? And see? enter Chuck. I'll show so, you. Wouldn't you like oh, to see? No. See? He just emerges from the shadows and just whispers in there, I'll show you. You're going back in the box, Bindle Brad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is getting darker and darker for me because now we got Bindle Brad and Rucksack Randy, and now Chuck to me in my head is Palpatine. <laughs> Do it. Yes. Good. Strike him down with anger. Chuck's got a different Bindle. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's no. That's true. <laughs> so here's so, the thing you work the totem on top the scrotum, and then you can actually <laughs> have some Tinder diddle vittles. <laughs> <laughs> God. And that's called comedy for anybody that's listening. <laughs> uh, this is where I would add a laugh track if I was suitably talented at editing. And all that really entails is just ripping it from YouTube. Yes. Like I said, <laughs> if I was. <laughs> There you go. Ha, I'll just put that ha, three ha, seconds back. Ha, Done. Ha, 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 Perfect. I throw some Beautiful. reverb on it and fucking send ha. it. <laughs> so unlike uh, Rutsack Randy and Bindle Brad, whatever Brad. his name, is. yeah, Brindle Brad, um, <laughs> Brad, all, Brindle other, Brad. <laughs> Brindle all other kids <laughs> that were sent there as part of their court order uh, did not want to be there, and so resisted any sort of education or me- or, or training on sitting on and chuck sexual overtures <laughs> <laughs> they said no too many times <sighs> this was around the same time chuck started clamping down on how Synanon was run in 1970 uh, chuck decided that he should quit smoking for health reasons okay. and decided that you know it would help if everyone did the same thing. And so he banned <laughs> cigarettes from Synodon. I'm going on a diet, and you're all going on the diet with me. I cook and I clean. Yeah. Um, many people outright quit and just left the organization. Smoke uh, this. I want my candles. It also saved Synodon several hundred thousand dollars a year in cigarettes. <laughs> Um, Wait, I didn't so write prior, down the specific. Yeah, prior to this, prior. it was just uh, just a cloud of just perpetual smoke. Yes, I mean, yeah. even to this day, that still, if you go into a drug rehabilitation clinic, they encourage you to keep cigarettes. Yeah, because you still really? have something to fix it. Yes, uh, they will still like if you've got cigarettes, we encourage you to keep them because that'll help you have something else to fixate on. Hey, you want some heroin? Smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Is that part of okay. life? I mean, you're still lighting something. Because it was actually Chuck's accountant that was like, we really can't afford the cigarette habit anymore. We got to cut that out. No, he was actually, um, I can't remember if he made the decision on his own or if he was uh, recommended to by a doctor uh, to cut out smoking. Um, But also keep in mind that in 1970, he was uh, 57. So it wasn't like he was a young chicken or spring chicken. It was about that time. He was probably waking up with with the good amount of lung butter, you know, like... (laughs) You know, yeah, I don't know Chuck personally, but I believe that he probably doesn't believe in doctors. He actually does take, like you mentioned, the diet. Uh, I mentioned this later, but he actually cuts refined sugar from his diet as well, and force that upon all the members of Synanon. 
It's just Damn. it just keeps getting um, worse and worse. So since you've read about him for for a little bit, uh, just to bring it to modern day real quick, do you think in current times that he would be for or against life saving vaccines? He never seemed like one that was against it. Okay. Um, he would try and take control over it um, and try and dictate how he wanted to distribute or do whatever he right. wanted. As, he, as long as but, he could be but, the one to choose how you got the vaccine, that was all that mattered to him. That, was, that would be yeah. all that mattered to him. So essentially, mm -hmm. if you're anti-vax, you're worse than Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that, Mom Fair and enough, Dad? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take that, Mom! And I wish I made, ran away to Sinanon. <laughs> and he made Brindle, Brad, and Rucksack Randy fight each other. That's Just evil. for fun. And also, speaking of which, if the phrase Fauci ouchy has ever left your mouth, I plan oh on beating you with a bindle God. at some point in the near future as well. Uh. <laughs> Anywho. So, so the refined sugar and the uh, smoking, uh, these were examples of the kind of top-down control he had over the lives of Sinanites, which were what they were called. Is that Hellraiser? That's biblical. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, you know, uh, <laughs> come on. Shane, I feel like Cenobites it would actually have been better to use for the <laughs> followers of Synanon. Well, that that's adorable. That you, is pretty the cute. second you walk in the door to the hatchery, he's like, we have such sights to show you. <laughs> hey, Courtney, that's also a horror movie that I think you should watch. I definitely think I should watch that too because I still have yet uh, to. Fun, fun little what eighties, right, Shane? Yes, early 80s? Uh, late seventies, early eighties. It was yes. shot in the seventies, but yeah, it oh. holds up. It still looks. It's so goddamn fantastic. good. I don't care what anybody says. It's still my favorite. It's great. Well, anyway. that was that was the time in cinema where a Practical. lot of special effects, where where everything was. I'm gesturing with my hands again. I'm Cinema sorry. Cinema. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna gesture like I'm Italian. Cinema. Hey. I don't think they do uh, that. I. They probably I don't. It's offensive. a. It's a. It's a very offensive stereotype, and I do apologize. But are I'm you still Italian? Going to embrace and do. Is that your thing to do? Actually, no. I am not Italian. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that's wow. why you have that taste in pizza. You cinnamon sugared <laughs> shithead. <laughs> Guys, I gotta I gotta use that tangent because I'm gonna start a secondary TikTok where I make pineapple desserts and put pepperoni on them. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I love it. Is this a real thing? Are you really gonna I'm, do this? I'm working on it, yeah. Oh, it's so That's fucking good. <laughs> you should also just post them on just post them on the forum. Yeah, just, <laughs> Just cro right. cross post it. Okay, yeah, great. Exactly. There you go. Do yeah, it, I don't, do it on I your secondary it account yeah, and then throw go. it onto the disinformed just uh, just for the funnies of it. Uh, so it's no pineapperoni. Like I'm gonna make like a pineapple upside down cake and I'm gonna take the cherries out and put pepperonis instead and it's gonna be great. Are you gonna make them balled up and like look like, <laughs> like cherries, little... but they're actual? But... Well, you can make flowers out of pepperonis. Oh, that's true. Well, congratulations. You have officially determined that I will never eat another <laughs> item that you offer me ever again. I beg to differ. She, this she will tempt you with such delicacy. Oh, she's going to try. <laughs> You'll be tempted by the fruit of another. I haven't proven that I'm <laughs> capable of withstanding temptation at this point in my life. So Chuck would act on an impulse, rationalize his behavior, and then claim that that had been the plan all along. Just like he did with the <laughs> cigarettes and with the refined sugar. Once you uh, get caught, then it's like, yeah, you know, I knew exactly what I was doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I made a, I, I think I made a passing remark last week about uh, when the game made a sudden transition. Uh, we're going to cover that now. In 1973, during a session of the game, a woman started talking. Well, I don't know why I wrote this. I must have been delirious. A woman started talking mad shit about <laughs> Chuck's wife. Uh, while this was par for the course. Um, for some reason, that day, Chuck took this very, very personally. He got up, slowly walked over to the woman, paused, and then cold clocked her on, <laughs> uh, right on her, the side of her face. No. Uh, she fell to the floor, you, and he calmly walked out. You and said now, in the previous episode that he threw a beverage on this individual. <sighs> I'm glad. I'm glad Aww. someone remembered. Yeah, that that was bullshit. I yeah. was kind of hoping it was the uh, <laughs> him walking up, and being like, "Hey, what's up? What the five fingers say to the face?" <laughs> I was thinking more Slap. the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man. <laughs> Just 
that's what the reference was. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Jesus, I'm with that you. was for you, Are Shane. Are you guys yeah. really gonna like just berate me into watching this fucking it movie? Is it is one of those things where it's so bad it's partially enjoyable. I can't say it's good by any stretch of the is imagination. Is that also the title of your biography? <laughs> It's passable. It's actually so what he puts in his Tinder profile. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm partially passable. Um, <laughs> like corn. Par- yeah. <laughs> partially you, void, mostly passable. <laughs> I'm okay some of the time, but not really. Um, yeah. No, it, it, it's bullshit. Chuck grabbed a can of soda and poured it over her head. That was the only thing he did. I said uh, no refined sugars. <laughs> Here's cancer, bitch. Uh, (laughs) Later on, he apologized, but then almost immediately recanted his apology (laughs) and rationalized his behavior as justified. Hey, hey, listen, about the the soda earlier, I'm I'm really sorry that you're a little bitch. (laughs) You should have just taken it like a champ. So I would have. Chuck is undiagnosed bipolar. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. He... Trust me, I've I've been on the internet, so I'm an expert on mental health. I am an armchair psychologist, and I can definitely say, based off based based, based. off the reading, uh, <laughs> that he has bipolar. Yeah, uh, he later explained, "I gave the woman a lesson in manners." You sure did. And, Fucking nailed it. And mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> This opened the floodgates, especially for the kids that were resisting previous, previously, uh, previous synanon treatment. So he just started pouring soda on everybody? <laughs> no, uh, people started beating each other during the game. Because, <laughs> oh and not beating God. off. Damn it. Beating Thanks for clarifying. We were, other. yeah. Mm-hmm. Super I, I, I just saw the light in Shane's eyes. I just went like, back to Chuck doing the rub and tug, just terrorizing everybody God. walking around the room. <laughs> He's just, just running pointing to the at him like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Who's like, getting what the shot you today? See? <laughs> what did you say about my wife? She's a great woman. <laughs> that wasn't soda this time. <laughs> so his Mike Tyson's punch out character is Soda Popinski. <laughs> <laughs> Just occasionally, the screen would just be covered in white to obscure the obscure the character. Um, Speaking of which, mine was Bald Bull, by the way, for those playing the home game. Nice. So <laughs> no one has played Mike Tyson's Punch Out on this call. No. no, I know of the game. I've but... seen clips of the game, but I've never played the game. Oh, well, you're gonna My play the game right now. Existed. Listen, you're stupid. You're ugly, and your mother dresses you funny. <laughs> Yeah. Here's true. the soda. <laughs> Here's the soda. <laughs> so, kids were praised for ratting out other kids breaking the rules. Naturally. Kids would be beaten if they resisted at all, and after being beaten, would be subjected to the game. <laughs> Thus began the punk squad, because, as we've <laughs> mentioned many, many times, oh, no. Chuck has no creativity when it comes to names. <laughs> Um, that, that's a little dated. It was never a phase, Mom. Punk Squad was, was what he called it. In the 70s? Yeah. They're the Punk Squad. That was the name given to the juvenile rehab program. Okay. Because you're just a bunch of punks. Did the... And it was also the beginning of the troubled teen industry. Never mind the Bullocks. (sighs) Yeah. If you know anything about that, it's... It all goes back to Synanon and the Punk Squad. Uh, we definitely don't have time to cover that topic. Oh, um, no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I do want to say that um, I I dug a little bit deeper and I did find connections to like Dr. Phil because a lot of um, a lot of his episodes. This was something that I remember from a previous podcast that I listened to, but uh, he actually sends a lot of the kids that are on a show to a specific ranch, I think, in Utah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the troubled teen industry is actually centered or based out of Utah yep. uh, because of the way their laws are. Yeah, it's called uh, the filling station. Stuff. Probably. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, I just wanted to make like a connection there where the troubled teen industry started from from Synodon. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I just love gesturing I, with I my hands. I appreciate that you gesture with your hands. hands. We all do it. I just, if I don't make fun of you, I'm not doing my job. 
Just got um, jazz hands. What it reminds me of, Cha-cha-cha. you and your hand gestures, is uh, apparently there's a like a door greeting thing that's really popular in sororities, and you can look this up on YouTube. <laughs> I've seen your it, wife just, do it. It's amazing. Yeah, it is a hellscape of like 40, just 40 women that all look exactly the same opening up a door and then from the corners even from the top because they get creative and like would like hang people down like when the door opens there is just a barrage of women just waving high at you and then the door will shut it'll open it up and it's just it's a it's, it's just terrifying it's horrifying. And that's what you are with your hand gestures you're just terrifying everyone well good thing most people that yeah. listen to this are just listening to the audio yeah uh, so uh, well listen i've good. seen labyrinth too so wait there's a sequel we're helping hands. So, <laughs> while this new violent version of the game was tested on the punk, punk squad, it soon spread to other areas of Synanon, um, specifically Splitties, so the people who left the program, because as mentioned a hundred times previous, not creative, uh, suspected thieves, and my favorite, perceived spies and enemies. <laughs> To encourage, I'm sorry, encourage more uniformity in response to this unforeseen threat, uh, Chuck required that women and men must shave their heads and wear bib overalls. No. no. Yeah. You Originally leave my haircuts. family out of this. <laughs> we're Originally proud. haircuts um, were for people that would act out. And it used to be they would get a dressing down, like they would participate in a special version of the game. But it eventually spread to being a literal haircut where they would have their head shaved. And then literally dressed down because bib overalls. Hot. Nothing else. Just that. Mm -hmm. He also required aerobics, running, and then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, cutting out refined sugar. Uh, stating that such notions were a squeeze, his words, (laughs) to get rotten fruit out of Synanon. Granted, Chuck was told to do these things by his doctors, from what I could tell, but it was probably just a coincidence. He probably just wanted everyone to be healthy, too. So, remember Tamales Bay, as I had mentioned and butchered multiple times previously? By this time, so as everything was starting to explode with violence, uh, it had been massively developed. It contained not just the hatchery and the punk squad, but also multiple unpermitted buildings, a trash dump, and even a fleet of ships. Before you, if you call bullshit on any of the bullshit, bullshit. If you call bullshit on any of them, that's all true. At the other location in Badger, uh, Synanon had hundreds of motorbikes and trucks, an airstrip with its own private plane, and a massive, luxurious complex known as the Home Place, where Chuck, his wife, and the upper echelons of Synanon lived. With all this stuff, the IRS figured in 1974 that maybe Synanon shouldn't be considered a tax-exempt organization uh, and challenged it, uh, challenged the status, uh, arguing that Synanon was no longer a drug rehabilitation center but an experimental society, which was true. Chuck, not one to be outdone, uh, claimed that this wasn't Synanon's final form, my words, not his, and declared Synanon to be a full-fledged religion, uh, saying, this is the kind of revolution that moved the world from Judaism to Catholicism to Protestantism to Synanism. This is a total revolution game. Chuck presented this idea to the Synanon board of directors, who unanimously approved the plan. And the last thing I will say is, on one of the proposals was written, who will be God? Oh. And uh, that is the end of part two. Okay. I, for one, am interested to see where this goes. It's, uh, it gets, it gets spicy. Now, whether or not uh, you can convince Shane. It's a spicy tamale. Is it a trilogy? (laughs) It is a trilogy. Um, A lot of, a lot of people break Synanon into three three steps, three parts, three phases. Like a three-step okay. program? Drug rehabilitation. Yeah. Drug rehabilitation, experimental society, religious cult. Okay, so, so. next week is going to be like, that's the Chef Kiffs episode, right? That's mm-hmm. where things truly Everything. and purely hit the fan and get whack doodle. Yeah. There's a lot of threats. There is a group of people called Imperial Marines, 
and uh, it features a lawyer and a rattlesnake that was de-rattled. So. Oh, Those I know that part. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, so that would be cool to to cover. And then actually, there will be a little side thing in there actually. that will involve Shane's hometown. Hell. <laughs> Yes, hell, Arizona. <laughs> There's connections that I found through digging with Lake Havasu. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Just when he thinks he's out, Lake Havasu, as we in. say. Yes. Yes. Um, Thank you. So, <laughs> any stabs before I give the uh, the other lies? Sure, give me the knife. All righty. So, um, I the first lie. I had mentioned that uh, Santa and Monica had assaulted their palace, so to speak, twice. Uh, they actually did not do that. Uh, the city was not that stupid. Um, but I have an apology I need to make. Last week, I had offhandedly mentioned that the first time when he was arrested on zoning and he decided to go to jail, they assaulted his beachfront. That didn't happen that time. That was an error on my part, and I apologize. This was the time. Instead of serving in papers and arresting him, they just said, fuck it, we're just going to storm the trenches. So you have a lie predicated on an error from the last week, and you expected yes. us to suss that out. But <laughs> hey, it could have been worse. He could have had one of us present a paragraph, and then in that paragraph, the guest presenter could have had a lie. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, I thought that was creative. Uh, John's thing, not mine. Um. But, yeah, I mean, I figured someone would be like, you know, why would the city attempt this twice? But the when it was attempted was the accidental mistake on my I part, was still so. fuming over Ralph Waldo Emerson at the time, so. <laughs> that yeah, that was, was a, that was a very unique, uh, you know, moment of frenzy. Yeah, and uh, again, I apologize very much for a, I the source speak. and then for me not recognizing it. I'm glad that you're apologizing to Shane because now I feel like you guys can start rebuilding your friendship that was destroyed in that moment. Yeah, so. it was it was definitely a lover spat, but we're not friends. Make up sex will be. <laughs> he didn't like it. Well, <laughs> well, I uh... guess I'm gonna have to clear my night then. Or, uh, I, I guess I guess I'm free tonight then. I know it was you, Fredo. <sighs> you broke my heart. Oh, God, Look what they did to my boy. Um. So the second lie. I mentioned that Synanon ran a business selling promotional items. That is true, but the get well soon balloons and birthday <laughs> cards. Yeah. That was, fucking fuck. yeah. I, I <laughs> truthfully, as you were saying it the entire time, I'm like, it's, this is, this is pretty far out. Um, the, they mentioned promotional items, but the only thing that I could really find was that it mentioned pens, <laughs> just, just <laughs> pens. So they manufactured pens, which I mean, you know, was it Bic or B-I-C or however you say that brand? Yeah, yeah right. They've been, oh, they've been making pens for millennia, as far as I'm aware, and they're still they've been in the pen game for successful, years. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you caught the third lie. Um, trippers would not hallucinate and start an orgy. Uh, they definitely did not do that. Um, you caught the fourth lie. Uh, he did not coin the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. And then the uh, last one was you also called uh, that he cold clocked her like, uh, oh, man, like what Nick a Cage. fucking vision. Yeah, yeah. I mean that would have been pretty cool. It's like, yeah, your wife, your wife don't know shit. Just I, gets up, walks over, and just. I can't decide whether or not I would want to see something like that. But the part of me that doesn't like humanity as a whole. If, as long as I could be guaranteed in the moment that I would have nothing to do with it and it wouldn't come to me in any way, shape, or form, I think I would love to see someone get cold cocked. Cold like clocked? In, just, yeah, you know, like cold cocked. You know, yeah, just dick out. Just out of, like, if right I was across just, the If face. I was like at the bar and then just someone outside off our property line uh, just, <laughs> just like was walking down the sidewalk and then to want like no words, no exchanges, just looks up and chooses violence, I, I think that would be a really good time. All right, then. You heard it here sorry. first, guys. Not sorry. John wants to see a woman <laughs> slapped across the face. A or a man. <laughs> or both. This is why he keeps showing us videos of people slapping one another in, you know, fast food restaurants or hitting each other with canned beverages. Yeah. <sighs> Those were the days. Man, I wish that we could go back to the spiked iced tea. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Rip. 
So, uh, how's everyone today? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just, I That's I like the third time That's today, the... Michael. I, I just like and it's the third that. week in a row, at least. Yeah. It, it's it's how I transition from the episode itself to the you know after part where we're just shooting the shit. Bullshit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the word for it. I'm excited to to go uh, talk about the book that we all read. And Me too. I feel like I got bit by the reading bug again. You know, like sitting, <gasps> like actually sitting down and reading for extended periods of time. And have you guys ever been in the middle of a book and been like, I, am I actually is this a good book or is it just passing the time? Have you ever ever had Shane? Maybe no. The moment that I get to that point, I I just uh, I'm done. I'm done with the book I, if I'm worried about that. I got rec- or a, t- a TikTok recommended, or there was a TikTok that recommended a book called Verity, um, and it's a thriller. But I am fairly certain I'm halfway through. I I I burned through it in like I'm halfway through in two sittings just because it's easy. Uh, and and you like, have yet to be thrilled. Well, no, there's some fucked up things in it, but there's also some moments where I'm like, did I get tricked into reading a romance novel? On accident? <laughs> um, according to Book Talk, that is a romance novel because I've almost downloaded it. Oh, well, I'll, I can let you borrow thriller. it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of fucking. Yeah. It's... Dear God, there's a lot of fucking. <laughs> and that's a bad thing? Well, it's automatically uh, 10 steps thrilling. better than recursion where everybody's just like, so, whisk me away into a closet, Raul. So that is the base for my comparison because when I first read recursion, I was like, oh man, this is a good book. And then when we talked about it again, and I reread or re-listened to it. I was like, no, it was just, it just served the purpose of, of what I needed it to do. Like I just needed a book in the moment and it was entertaining for the once through um so your rebound book that's yeah well that's my way of saying like shane on occasion like well shane's going through all the stephen kings right now mm-hmm. uh, i think you said that last week yes and i've actively been trying to like take a break not from stephen king but just from like single genre books and like try and branch off just a little bit just to like cleanse the palate a little bit so i can appreciate it more so Fair. going into uh to revival uh not to talk about it before we get there but it was. It felt like going home. Mm. So anyway, that that's what that's what I've been doing, Michael. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for asking how I was doing. I'm glad for the that's, fourth that's, time. That's uh, and you've given different answers every single time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What can I say? I don't ever want to be consistent <laughs> or complete. That's, that's totally understandable. Guys, I have a. Well, confession. I'm just a. Oh, go for it, Courtney. No, go ahead. Oh, shit. No, I'm just a simmering bucket of rage, as per usual. I mean, oh. it doesn't need to be discussed any further. <laughs> Despite all his rage, <laughs> he's just a Shane in his cage. Kindler, gentler Shane in the cage. <laughs> one of these days, oh, no. one of these days, you fucks are going to be funny, and I'll get to retire, and it'll be really one of these great. days. No. Bam, boom, straight to the moon. What's your confession, Courtney? Guys, I'm struggling with Dune, and the reason I'm struggling with <gasps> Dune is I had watched the South Park episode about Tom Mer- Brady's poop being the spice melange, and that's all Wait. I can think about. Holy shit, I didn't even remember that episode. Yes. I can go watch a South Park episode that has Dune references Yes, in it? and we watched it probably a year ago, and now every time oh. they say the spice, I just... It's a really oh good God. book, though. I'm really enjoying it. Are, are you listening to yeah, it? Yeah, I am. It has a really good cast. Mm-hmm. So John meant literally holy shit when we were talking about Tom Brady's Yeah. Group. All right. Yep. Shit. Oh. Okay. Actual cool. shit. Indeed. Um, well, I'm going to find that episode. And you have to watch and, right uh, the uh, anti-vax special they just did. Very funny. Oh, goodness gracious. Is that recent to this week? Uh, Yeah, like within the last few weeks. Holy shit. Okay, I had no idea. I will watch that because all of their pandemic specials uh, over the past year and a half have been so on point as you would hope and expect from them. And like on brand, I feel like it's a return to form, like having them have something to rally against uh, is where they're the strongest instead of like when there's peacetime and you can feel that they're just like, you know, just swimming through shit to find something to, to write about. Well, in a week where we are the holiest of holies, because we've gone from a holy shit and holy roller to holy diver, I'd say that we're just all out of holes now. So that's a, a good place as any to, to leave as we move for the end of Michael's stirring epoch that will be week three 
of Synanon. Rap. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> I thought you were going to go into talking about the our socials, and then there was just the pause. And Michael, we have a link like you tree beat now. The life out of them. Yeah, we have a oh, link tree. Shit. I gave up. <sighs> anyway, you know what to do, friends and neighbors. If you're digging what you're hearing on this grooving little show, and I have no clue why, unless you're, of course, super fan Michael or Stephen. Big shout out. Nah, it's Stephen's old news. Okay. Bye, Stephen. Bye. Moving on. Oh, starting shit. We have beef now. I got a fresh paint of coat over here, so I'm ready to go. But uh, no, uh, if you're enjoying what you are encountering here, please go into your preferred podcast provider app, like, comment, and of course, subscribe, because it's the only way that you're going to be able to get our new material, which wings your way every marvelous Monday morning. And of course, we are back on the tubes of you weekly. And I mean that as W-E-A-K, because, you know, we're, we're, we're trying we're still punching from underneath, but uh, not sure we're going to make it all ten rounds. But we're going to give you a fan fiction, book discussion, and of course, just uh, the occasional general nonsense and malaise that we do so much enjoy here amongst all of us. But uh, I think if you are keen on scoping any of these things out and you have no idea how to find them, there is in fact a link tree in the show description down below and it will take you to a plethora of pleasures that will be available at your very fingertips at any given interval so go indulge yourself and indulge us while you're there and just give us all the feedback we so deeply desire but I believe that is going to finally give us a cessation to our greedy addictive ways a la Sinanon for this week. So for Disinformed, I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. Zippity zoop, we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs>